Okay, our micro lesson today is about how to create emotion in fiction. And so there are a couple of things, there are many ways to do this, first of all, but what we're talking about today is one particular way. Um, but just as an introduction, there are basically two types of emotion in fiction. The first type is what your character is feeling. You know, maybe they're scared and their heart thuds or they feel nauseated and their mouth waters as if they're going to throw up. So that's the first type, type what your character's feeling. And then the second type is making your reader feel something, creating emotion in your reader. And so the way that you approach these two things depends very much on the type of fiction that you want to write. So there are so many different styles. You know, you could be on the literary end of the spectrum where there's not going to be any telling at all or, or hardly any. Um, or you could be on the genre end of the fiction where the reader really wants to be told what the character is feeling because this is a fast paced story and they're there for the thrills and the, you know, if it's a fantasy, like the fresh world and all that kind of thing, they're not there to slow down and to feel everything the character is feeling. They don't want that. Um, and, you know, both are legitimate, of course. So you have to decide, first of all, where on the spectrum you want to have your prose fall, how much telling do you want to include, how much showing, how hard do you want to make your reader work. So one way that you can do this is to identify a writer that you want to emulate. And it also can be helpful to look at a publisher. If you were to publish a novel or a book traditionally, which publisher would you be interested in. You know, if you're looking at Scribner, then you're going to be looking at the most literary style of writing. If you're looking at Barclay, um, you're, you know, you're looking at something that's a genre publisher and the language is going to be very different. So you can go to your bookshelves, you can look at your favorite books, just a couple, one, one will do, um, and really be clear about the kind of prose that you want to write. Then from there, you can begin to identify how those writers that you want to emulate created emotion. Um, and then that will be useful to you rather than me telling you how, what I think or what I like to do. Um, it's about you deciding for yourself. Um, and of course, you know, we, we talked before about um, upmarket fiction. So upmarket fiction is sort of, if this is literary and this is genre, upmarket is in the middle where you've got page turning story and you may well have some of the tropes of genre fiction, but you'll also have more complex themes, character driven stories, complex characters, and of course, great writing. So, um, you know, that's, that's also one of the things that you might be looking to do. So today, the, the single way that we're looking at of creating emotion, and we're going to use Vanka by Chekhov to go through how you break this down. Uh, we're looking at communication that comes from your character. So that's three things. It's basically the words that come out of your character. So that's words either in thought, something that they think, interior monologue, or it's dialogue, something that they say, which obviously you're going to put in your quotes, or in, as in this story, it's where Vanker is actually writing a letter. You know, that's less common. It's because it's the late 1800s and letter writing was how they communicated. So, you know, mostly for most of us, we're going to be looking at interior monologue, your character's thoughts and what they say. Um, and so the reason, the reason that this is one of the most effective ways to get your emotion across indirectly is because human beings, as we know, you know, human beings have a thought and that creates an emotion. So when your reader reads a thought on the page, they do the same thing. They're going to have an emotion. 
the thought that you write for your character is going to create an emotion, possibly more than one, you know, it could be complex, it could be a couple of different responses, but at least one emotion in your reader. So um, it's a question of thoughts or words creating emotions in a human being. Um, so the reader will process what it means when you write what's coming out of your character. So um, here's Vanka by Chekhov. I sent this in the newsletter, so you will have a copy of it, but it's also going to be in, um, I'll, I'll upload this document you can, um, so that you can download it. Uh, it's, it, anyone can Google Vanka. It's in, you know, it's so old that it's um, widely available and it's very short and it's very compelling. Um, it's not at all dense or hard to read. It's, it's really simple. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen here and let's have a look at the first, the first paragraph. So if you haven't read it before, um, I'm just going to tell you that the first paragraph is narrative summary. So that means that the narrator is summarizing the situation, is summarizing what's going on. Um, in terms of creating emotion in the reader, there is a step prior to this that you go through when you think about your story and you come up with your premise. So the premise of this story is already very moving. This is a nine-year-old child. Um, this, this might be a spoiler for those of you who haven't read it, but I think we have to do that. So it's a nine-year-old child who's been apprenticed to a shoemaker who is horrible. So this nine-year-old has been you know, ripped from his family, his loving family, and he's been given to this horrid shoemaker to be trained um, in, obviously, in shoemaking. And so he's very, very unhappy. So that's the first, the paragraph that we begin with summarizes that in narrative summary. And then you can see, if we look at this here, the first thing um, that Vanka writes, and this could either be dialogue, it could also be interior monologue, it could be a thought. Dear Grandad Makarich, he wrote, I am writing a letter to you. I send you Christmas greetings and hope God will send you his blessings. I have no father and no mummy and you are all I have left. So the main character here, Vanka, is, is not trying to do anything other than state the facts. You know, he's not um, being overly emotional. We, we see right away this is a, a child who only has his grandfather. Um, and then when you scroll on down, what the exercise here, the value in this exercise is for you to choose a passage and take your own pen and underline all of the dialogue, underline all of the interior monologue, and in this case, for this story, underline the writing in the letter. So any, whatever's in quotes here, because that's the equivalent of, of dialogue in this story. So that's the way for you to break down a piece of writing that you aspire to, the, the quality of prose that you're after. So, um, as we scroll on down, you can see there's some nice sort of juxtaposition here because the next section here in dialogue is grandfather being overcome with delight, breaking out into jolly laughter and shouting, good for frozen noses. You know, so that's a wonderful contrast, wonderful in terms of its effectiveness. You know, it's, it's horribly sad. Um, but he's remembering, the main character is remembering his grandfather and, you know, just by having this insight into what the character is thinking, it allows us to think this poor child, you know, this is what he's lost. Um, and then moving on down. So Vanka goes on writing. And yesterday I had such a hiding 
The master took me by the hair and dragged me out into the yard and beat me with the stirrup strap because by mistake I went to sleep rocking their baby. So he's being horribly abused. Um, and in the newsletter, I don't know if you happen to have time to look at it, I know Chekhov's been in there before, but I added some different information this time, which was really about the part in his life that it's reasonable to assume might have provided this material. Um, Chek yeah, Chekhov was a doctor and he treated people of all classes. Um, and he was known for, for not being, um, you know, not being a, a snob or class conscious, he, he didn't care. Um, and so he saw tremendous poverty and it's very easy to imagine that he actually saw this kid. But at the same time, we know from Wikipedia that Chekhov's own childhood uh, was very difficult because his father was um, went bankrupt at a time when that was a criminal act and you would go to a debtor's prison for that. And so the family fell into bankruptcy. It physically and emotionally broke his mother, who was um, the person that he said gave, gave him and his siblings their soul. She was a storyteller and she told him, told them all stories as they grew up. Um, so, you know, we can easily sort of just as we can imagine how he came up with this information. Um, and again, he says further on here, they give me bread in the morning and gruel for dinner and in the evening bread again, but I never get tea or cabbage soup they gobble it all up themselves and they make me sleep in the passage and when their baby cries I don't get any sleep at all I have to rock it dear granddad for the lord's sake take me away from here take me home to the village I can't bear it any longer oh granddad I beg and implore you and I will always pray for you do take me away from here or I'll die so you know it's just a really like horrible terribly sad story I will grind your snuff for you I will pray for you and you can flog me as hard as you like if I am naughty and if you think there is nothing for me to do I will ask the steward to take pity on me and let me clean the boots or I will go as a shepherd boy instead of Fedya dear granddad I can't stand it it is killing me so you know this is just galling and gruesome and awful and just Suzanne was saying that it's depressing and the one thing that I find redeeming about this story is the fact the optimism uh, that this nine-year-old has you know and the uh, initiative he's shown because he's waited until they all left and he's taken a big risk to get the ink and the paper and to stay up writing this letter and then at the very end of the story what he does at the very end of the story also gives me great hope for this character um, so that's the reason that I don't find it too, too awful. Um, but, but so, you know, I mean, it is awful, but at the ending for this character, I, I imagine that there, this character would have found a way to survive is, is how it feels. But so all of the dialogue, all of his thoughts, those are what the reader absorbs and we have a thought about that and it's super simple you know it's not hard at all it's the interior monologue the thoughts of your character the speech the words that they say and if they're writing if they happen to be writing I mean if they're texting you know if they're texting or email in in modern times you know that also is a great way to get across the emotion <laughs>